Welcome back to the shop. I'm John, and in this video, I'd like to show you how to make our version of a basket weave and grain cutting board. Orienting the grain in the up position really is the key to producing this pattern, but it also gives you a tougher cutting surface. Let's get started. This pattern is made from two inch by two inch blocks. And again, what we're looking at here is all end grain. The makeup of these strips, uh, you can see we need three of these, and we're going to need three laminations that look like this. And those laminated strips make up the entire board. So let's look at our strips. I have six different species of wood uh, that actually I rescued from our scrap pile. All of them are closed grain, which makes them really good for an end grain cutting board. And I have a mix of light and dark woods that'll make up this pattern. Here we have walnut. It's the thickest stack because walnut will be used on every single lamination. Uh, next we have hard maple. Again, that will be used as, as the little white pinstripes throughout. Cherry, paduke, beech, and some sort of mystery rosewood. We'll be laminating all of these strips into our blanks and then those blanks get cross-cut into the blocks later. The strips can come from wood of any thickness, depending on what you have. Face joint the workpiece before resawing so you have a flat and true surface. Plane in batches for uniform thickness. Stack everything in order to make sure we have all the right pieces. I like to take this a step further and make sure the blanks are oriented the same. I have all my strips laid out into the blocks that we'll need to laminate. But one thing I want to look at before doing that is the layout or orientation of all the end grain. The easiest one, I think, to see is on this beach. You can see we kind of have a smiley face that goes this way, a smiley face that goes this way, but on this one, it goes in the opposite direction. And again, on the finish board, this is what you see. So I want to try to unify this as much as possible. So on this board, I'll actually flip it around. And now we have the grain all going in the same direction. I was noticing, too, on this cherry, this grain goes this direction, this grain follows that. But then when I go to this board, it goes in the opposite direction. So this would also be a candidate for flipping around. Let's see. So now that grain would look just like its neighbors. Now these uh, paduk are already pretty much in the same orientation, but, so that's fine. The rosewood is a little harder to see, so I'll have to get in and look at it. But I'm just going to go through, make sure everything is where I want it for the best visual on our finished product, and then I can start gluing them together. Mark the grain direction on the end of each strip and make sure everything matches. This extra detail will really make the finished piece shine. Now I have everything marked out and stacked the way I want it. Uh, again, on the finished piece, this is what shows, so I, I am really taking care to make sure it is all oriented the way I want it. But you'll notice this is a bit wider than this. What's going on? All of these pieces were milled to two and a quarter inches rather than the finished size of two. After we laminated, then we're going to clean up the edges and bring them down to two by two blocks. <laughs> Well, this little guy might not be so happy about it, but I'm excited to start gluing. I am using a tight bond number three wood glue, which we won't call waterproof, but we'll call very water resistant. So typically what I'm doing is I'm putting glue on one of the work pieces and then squeezing those together. So I'm not putting glue on both faces, just one. This is a really nice way to laminate material if you have the clamps. Obviously, almost anything will work, 
but you can see it's it's almost like once you have it set up you almost have a little laminating press so you can very quickly go from applying glue to actually getting a lot of pressure where you need it. We have a couple calls on the outside. They're about an inch thick. Just to, again, try to spread out that clamping pressure. And I'm just looking for even amounts of squeeze out, making a little adjustment. So typically on these, tighten up the inner screw and then the outer screw really pinches it together. Once the glue is dried on the laminated blanks, I need to trim them to size. Because the edges are wavy, I'm using a ripping sled to put one straight edge on each of the blanks. I'm just hitting the high spots at first. Once I have a straight edge to put against the rip fence, I can make multiple passes to bring the blanks down to finished size. Now that I have my individual blanks trimmed to size, I can start thinking about my layout about how we're going to glue this all together. These three get rotated, and then everything will be sandwiched into one big cutting board plank, if you will. I still have my ends all marked out, so I want to look down and make sure all my smiley faces are going in the same direction, and they are. We're going to do uh, a few sub-assemblies on this glue up. So we're going to glue these two together, these two together, these two together, and then the three sub-assemblies will go together as one unit. I have a few little cracks here that I want to fine tune a little bit and I'll do that with a hand plane. Now that I have my three sub-assemblies glued together, I can glue together all six in one big glue up. If I'm having a little area like this that doesn't want to come together, I always have a clamp and backup to offer some convincing where it wants to go. Clean up the glue squeeze out, then run the block through your planer taking very light passes to flatten and clean up both sides. Cut the block in half, making two manageable chunks that you can index against the rip fence. Then cross cut the rows to finish size. An 80 tooth cross cut blade really makes for smooth cuts in this thick stock. As you cut, keep your finished rows in order. My block started out at 27 inches. So cross cutting these all to two and a quarter inches in length, I was able to get 10 strips. Obviously these don't do me any good, so we're gonna set those aside. The finish plan calls for eight of these strips. And I, again, have 10. So what I can do here, I could make an extra big board or before I get ahead of myself, I should check this to see if my, my two extra strips are a bit of insurance. And I see something right away that tells me we might be down to nine strips. So this piece, couldn't see it from the, the face grain at all as we were gluing up, we've hit a little bit of a pitch pocket. So if this really bothers you, remove that piece. If you don't mind, leave it in place. Uh, this shows a little bit of there was something going on in that tree, but it's not an empty void where I can have basically food and bacteria penetrate. I also have another little pitch pocket on this, so it looks like this particular cherry board had a little bit going on. I'm going to flip this all the way over. Let's check the back sides on these. So these look good. That piece actually looks good at, at, on that face. 
So if you were only ever going to use one side of the board, you could hide that down. And that looks pretty good as well. So on this face, everything is looking really good. So what I might do, take out number two and what were you? Three, four, five, and take out number six. And then that would give us a, a board. Both sides really clean. So we have this laid out, no cracks, no voids. We have the proper number of pieces, so our insurance plan worked. Now we can orient this in our finished pattern. So to get the basket weave, every other strip gets flipped. Just like that. Now our grain orientation really starts to shine here. The easy one to pick up is, is the beach. Smi uh, frowny face to your side, smiley face to my side. But you can see that grain is consistent all the way across. Let's put together a strategy for gluing this thing together. I could break it into sub-assemblies. We kind of did this before with our uh, strips where I could glue these four together and then put it all together in one big assembly. I am worrying about, as I put this together, I need this flush side to side and I need it flush up and down so I can't have uh, these moving all over the place. I don't want to try to do the whole thing because I can't move fast enough to get glue on all these joints, clamp it all together, and then go back and make sure everything is lined up. If I glue them in pairs, I could run into an issue where I'm not gluing these perfectly parallel. So this could be slightly bowed, this could be bowed the other way, and then as you're trying to put them together, you're, you're basically trying to crush laminations to get all of your uh, glue joints to come together cleanly. So one strategy I do is I kind of work from the inside out. What I'm going to do is glue these two center strips together and again make sure that they're perfectly flush on the faces that show and that they're flush side to side. Using all of these strips as my clamping calls. So once these guys are together, then I glue the two strips to those side together. Once that sets, then you just keep adding. And then you finish off with the pieces to the outside. If there's any uh, flex to the, the main block, these will be a lot easier to apply clamping pressure to than if I was trying to come with two blocks like this and push together some gaps. We are so close to being done. Now is the not so fun part, which is sanding. I want to try to accomplish two things. I want to, of course, get it smooth, but I also want to keep it as flat as possible. I put a straight edge on this and I have a little bit of a hump in the middle. I, I can feel a couple places, uh, but maybe we got up a little bit. So at first you'll see me concentrating here and then we'll blend it out. On the other side, it's the opposite. My corners or my ends are a little bit high, so they get worked on first and then we'll move to the middle. So I'm starting out with uh, 80 grit paper and I'm going to sand this all the way through 220 grit. Uh, so at first this is a two speed sander so we're going to set it aggressively just to get material off of there. And then as we approach 180, the 220 grit, then we'll uh, be a little bit less aggressive. Uh, and then to finish this off, it does get hand sanded. Well, the sanding is done. 
I have knocked my corners off with a low angle block plane. When you're doing end grain construction like this, you can route whatever profile you want on the edge, but you uh, should be cautious that this can chip and break out and you might spend more time sanding your routed profile than uh, actually cutting it. So that's why I like to, again, use that low angle on that block plane. Uh, it really cuts that end grain cleanly. So we need to put a little bit of finish on this and I have two options. The first uh, board that we did, I actually used this booze block mystery oil. Uh, so these guys build butcher blocks, so they also sell the oil. And it works really well. It's got a, like a little bit of solids. It must have some kind of wax in it, uh, and it gives just a really nice matte finish. For this board, we're going to use this butcher block oil from General Finishes. This is actually a mineral oil, and if you can get just regular mineral oil, that will work. Another option would be a really good quality extra virgin olive oil. You're looking for anything food safe that won't go rancid. Because it's oil, it's going to soak into the end grain of this really nicely, and you're going to have to put multiple coats on. What you want to avoid is a film finish, where if I'm cutting on this, it, uh, the coating actually will start flaking off, and that's not a good thing. The only thing negative about these is the dry time. It will take a little bit for this to dry to the touch. So thinking about gifting, if you are in a hurry, one option would be wax. If you can get a, a nice paraffin wax or maybe melt down your own beeswax, you can put that on, it'll dry very quickly and you can buff it out. The only negative is if you have any little cracks, dense divots, the wax will go straight into it same with open grain uh, on the wood. It'll soak down in there, so you might get streaking. But if it's the 24th of December, it's an option. So let's uh, put this on with my secret weapon, paper towel. So you'll notice I'm just putting a little bit on at a time and kind of working it in. I don't like to just flood the surface, work it around, um, first of all, it's a lot messier, but you can get into issues where you are applying too much oil. It doesn't have anywhere to go. So then as it dries, it's weeping out and you get these weird oil spots. It's not as bad with, you know, a very light oil like this. Usually you really get into trouble when it's a film uh, based oil like if you're applying Danish oil, which we're not here. But yeah, just a little bit at a time, work it in. Try to get a uniform finish. You'll see areas where it's soaking in and areas where it's not. We'll let this dry, then we'll do the other side. Because all of the edges are not end grain, they don't soak in as much, so I don't have to worry about them right now. The nice part about an oil finish like this is you can rebuild it and repair it easily. So. If you have any little issues, you can always add more. It's easy to either re-sand this board if it gets all cut up, or you could even scrape it. The end grain also is pretty self-healing against knife cuts. It'll hold up a lot better than a face grain board will. Some things you probably don't want to do, you don't want to run this through the dishwasher. The glue is quote unquote waterproof, but it won't hold up to high temperatures and being submerged in water for a long time so it would start to delaminate on you. This basket weave pattern turned out really nice and I managed to use up some scrap wood in the process. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.